If you look through the history books of players who have forever changed the game of football into what it is today, of course you'll hear names of all-time greats like Pele and Maradona. However, there was one more player in Europe who came right in between their eras and pioneered a completely different style of football that forever changed the game. One of the most skillful and graceful players ever, the great Johan Cruyff. So let's go and see just exactly how he did it. Hey guys, what's up? It's Raymar, and today we're gonna look at how good was Johan Cruyff. But before we start, I just want to let you guys all know that my merch store is finally open. I know it's winter time, so I dropped some amazing hoodies, long sleeves, and tees that are guaranteed to keep you guys warm and comfy. My personal favorites are these two hoodies right here, the football not soccer hoodie and the beautiful game hoodie. I mean, come on, just look at how minimal yet clean some of these designs are. So if you've ever wanted to support the channel and let everyone know you love football, why not get some merch and look good while doing it? Most of the hoodies will be gone by the end of winter, so click the first link in the the description to check my merch store out now. Johan Cruyff was a rare generational talent. As a child, his skill was already noticeably different from everyone around him. So much so that when he was spotted playing in his local playground at the age of 10 with the neighborhood kids, an Ajax youth coach living in the area would notice Cruyff's abilities and immediately offer him a guaranteed spot in the club's youth program. No questions asked and no trial even needed, knowing with pure confidence that he had found something special. Imagine how insane that would sound to a club's president today. Seven years later, at the age of 17, Johan Cruyff would make his debut for the men's team at a time where Ajax was literally at the lowest point of its history, finishing at the lowest standing in the league table since the club itself was founded. Just a year later, the 18-year-old Cruyff would prove that he indeed should have a spot in the starting lineup, and ever since Cruyff had solidified his spot in the starting 11, he absolutely dominated in every single match he played. And trust me, I can't even exaggerate this enough, as Cruyff literally made an immediate impact for his club, scoring a total of 25 goals in 23 appearances, a 1.09 goals per game ratio, leading his team from the worst season they've ever had just a year ago into becoming the 1965-1966 Eredivisie champions. All this from an 18-year-old player who just had his first season being in the starting lineup. And Cruyff didn't even play as a forward, but as an attacking midfielder, directly responsible for the flow of his team's offense. From this point on, Cruyff would be directly responsible for making Ajax the dominant club giants in the Netherlands for decades to come into what they are today. People had immense expectations of Cruyff in his home country, and the next season he would go on to completely shatter them as he would go on to score 41 goals in 41 appearances, once again carrying his team to another league title and adding his first Dutch Cup trophy. At this point, Cruyff was expected to do this for his club every single year, and in the 1967-68 season, he would lead them to a third straight title with 34 goals in 40 appearances, finally earning his very first Dutch Footballer of the Year award, which had for some reason managed to escape him the past few years, but finally could not be denied from him any longer. The next season, while Ajax finished three points behind the league title champions, Cruyff would still produce an absolutely amazing 34 goals and 23 assists in 43 appearances, an incredible .79 goals per game ratio while also having .54 assists a game, winning his second consecutive Dutch Footballer of the Year award. Despite the lack of success that season, nobody had doubted Cruyff for a moment, as in the 1969-1970 season, he would once again help his club win a double with the Eredivisie title and another Dutch Cup trophy, producing absolutely mind-blowing numbers by scoring 33 goals and getting 34 assists in 46 appearances, a .72 goals per game ratio and insane .74 assists per game ratio, being the only player to ever score at least 30 goals a game but still have more assists in a single season. Cruyff had been incredibly consistent putting up amazing performances, but had yet to take his club to the very top of Europe. That would all change in the 1970-1971 season. That year, Cruyff had scored an incredible six goals in a single match to lead his club to the Dutch Cup and finally cemented his team as the world's best by winning the European Cup, which, if you didn't know, was basically the old name of the Champions League. He would score 27 goals and have 15 assists in 37 appearances along the way, a .73 goals per game ratio, helping him win his third Dutch Footballer of the Year award and his very first Ballon d'Or. 
The 1971-1972 season would see even greater success, with Ajax winning the Eredivisie League title, with Cruyff leading the league in scoring, winning the Dutch Cup, and to top it off, Cruyff would score the only two goals in the final to win the European Cup once again, basically completing the highly coveted treble for Ajax. He would end the season with 33 goals and 10 assists in 45 games. And the next year, Cruyff along with Ajax would once again win the Eredivisie title and go back to back to back, repeating the European Cup, something that had only been done by three clubs in history, the most recent being Real Madrid's Champions League three-peat from 2016 to 2018, winning a Ballon d'Or along the way, and win his fourth Dutch Footballer of the Year award. This was when football pundits and managers at the time had noticed a new style of football that Cruyff's playing style had enabled, which would eventually become known as total football. Cruyff was so skilled and diverse that he basically moved back and forth from midfield to up top, pressing on offense, which is most simply like how Messi has been playing for the last several years. This theory of football requires a player skilled enough to do that, and Cruyff was a pioneer in such tactic by his pure skill and ability alone. This total football had led Cruyff's Ajax squad to an incredible, perfect record of 46-0 for two seasons spanning from 1971 to 1973, which had never been seen again. In total, while playing for Ajax, Cruyff would score 273 goals in 375 appearances, an incredible .73 goals per game ratio as an attacking midfielder. Cruyff is also well known for his time in Barcelona when he transferred to the club in the 1973-1974 season for a world record transfer fee at the time. He immediately made an impact by scoring 24 goals and having 4 assists in 38 appearances, helping Barcelona beat their rivals Real Madrid and win their very very first league title in over 14 years. In his five years at Barcelona, Cruyff only managed to win one La Liga title in 1974 and one Copa del Rey in 1978. He scored 85 goals and had 15 assists in 227 appearances, while delighting and putting on a show for countless fans with his skills in dribbling and scoring some amazing goals. Cruyff would also invent the iconic move known as the Cruyff Turn, while playing for his national team of the Netherlands in no other than the 1974 World Cup, Cruyff would feint a pass before dragging the ball back and turning 180 degrees to surprise and get past his defender. And the World Cup is one heck of a place to pioneer a completely new football move. In fact, we still see this move being used to beat defenders till this very day. Cruyff was also incredible for his national team. In that very same World Cup, Cruyff would lead his team to the final, scoring three goals and having three assists along the way, but unfortunately would lose 2-1 against West Germany. Cruyff's efforts in 1974 earned him a consecutive Ballon d'Or award, the very first of a small list to ever win the award three times. Cruyff would end his career with 402 goals and 108 assists in 702 appearances, a .57 goals per game and .15 assists per game ratio throughout his 20-year club career and an international career of 33 goals in 48 games a .69 goals per game ratio for his country. However, Cruyff would leave an even longer lasting legacy when he returned to football as a manager. He spent three years at Ajax from 1985 to 1988, being known as an innovator in attacking playstyle. Cruyff was also amazing at spotting talent, like when he scouted Marco van Bastien and Dennis Bergkamp at very young ages and helped them develop their foundations. He would also return to Barcelona in 1988 as one of the most iconic managers in the history of the club. Cruyff would essentially lay the foundations for generations of future success at Barcelona. Within his eight years in the club, Cruyff won four consecutive La Liga titles, three Spanish Super Cups, one Copa del Rey, one UEFA Super Cup, and one Champions League title. Cruyff also helped push Barcelona's La Masia Academy to further develop the club for long-term success and brought in iconic Barcelona players like Pep Guardiola, Ronald Koeman, Michael Lodrup, and Romario, leaving many apprentices to his method and mine as a footballing legend. Cruyff's coaching doctrine of total football and innovation of the 4-3-3 lineup would be one of the first uses of a defensive or holding midfielder and the modern attacking midfielder, which has even been used as a blueprint and building block of Pep Guardiola's eventual tiki-taka style of football, as well as many other positional theories we see in the game today.
Cruyff was, in many ways, one of the innovators of the modern game of football, both as a player and a coach, being one of the most influential footballers in history. Cruyff passed away in March 24, 2016 at the age of 64, but best believe he will be forever remembered, as he has affected the game in unforgettable ways and his name will continue to be spoken as long as the beautiful game is still being played. But that's all from me today, guys. This video was made possible by Alaric Aguilar, Owen Torres, King Kev, Annabelle Rose, Malcolm, and the rest of my patrons. If you guys want to support the channel, check my Patreon link in the description below. Any support is greatly appreciated. Anyways, make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe and turn those notifications on if you haven't already to see the best football documentaries on YouTube. Thank you guys for all the support and I'll see you in the next one.